All right, we're live. Um, the way that I started teaching this course is that I was at Arizona State University, and they said, hey, if you want to make a little extra money this summer, and I said, well, yeah, of course I'd like to make a little extra money because I'm completely broke. I'm a student, and I've got three kids, and I'm in school, and I don't, anyway. So they said, if you want to make a little extra money, you can teach this course over the summer, which is system analysis and design. And I said, okay, great. I haven't taught that course before. And so the instructor gave me all of his materials. He was kind of a funny guy. He said, well, at least I think he's funny. He says, I refuse to teach this course over the summer. It's impossible. Nobody can do it. But anyway, here's my materials. I guess it's your job. Um, he just says, too short a period of time. Anyway, so I took his original materials, and I've been using his materials, his book ever since then. And uh, one, one of the things I always do at the end of the semester is I stop and I think to my, I, you know, I, I have a final slide on the last day, slide deck, and I say, well, these are some really great things related to system analysis and design, but having been a professional in the field, uh, there are some things that I would have taught you if, if, I have, if I weren't using his material. And I was thinking about that probably a week or so ago, and I thought, I'm in charge here, I can teach you whatever I want. <laughs> it's not even at this school. So I thought, well, why don't I throw in here things that I think are the most important for you in system analysis and design. And I don't mean to trivialize some of the other stuff we've gone over. It, at any school you go to, you're going to learn about, in system analysis and design, you're going to learn about project management and using a Gantt chart uh, in Microsoft Project. You're going to learn about uh, you know, just the key words that we use to describe system analysis and design, planning, analysis, design, implementation, and support. Uh, you're going to learn about requirements, documentation, and uh, feasibility analysis. So that's pretty standard stuff and probably a data flow diagram, which is great. Um, but as I think about my, my role as a, all of my roles in IT, but one's related to leading the development of technology projects. One thing I don't think we really do well enough at least that I've seen, is, is doing mock-ups and putting together a requirements document that goes with that mock-up. And I would even venture to say that if that is all that you learned was how to do the, what I'm going to show you right here and do it well, even if you don't do it well today, if that was the only thing you did after this class, you're pro if, you're, if you're any good at it, you're probably better than 90% of the people out there, maybe, maybe much higher than that. So since I think it's really important in the business world, well, that'd be great if you guys all became my clones. If, if you guys went out there and uh, someday, you know, five, five, ten years from now, I'm, I'm meeting CIOs of all these companies and they're talking about their senior IT leaders and, and you guys are all using my stuff, I'll, I'll feel great. Uh, I'll feel like the world's a better place. Um, anyway, so uh, I put together a list of things that I thought would be good for you to learn. Really, there, there's two sections as it relates to, and I didn't even know what to call it exactly. Before I went to put together any piece of software, whether it was desktop-based or web-based, I would, I would put together a, a visual representation of that software, and sometimes I would have a written representation of that software. And, and I'll tell you a little bit about how this, why I'm so passionate about this. Uh, I graduated with an MIS degree, and I, I went out there in the workforce and I was highly paid. They're like, hey, you went to a great school. We were hiring on other people, paying them top salaries from a great school. You've studied MIS. And so we went into a startup environment and we started writing code. People would explain to us what it is that they wanted us to do. And this, this story kind of perhaps repeats something I've related to you before. But uh, my first job, I was really excited. I was getting paid a ridiculous amount of money. And the first after a couple couple few months, I, you know, had my first version of software ready to go, and they go, eh, "It's not really what we were looking for." Uh, okay, and then they kind of describe how they wanted it different. So I worked on it for a couple more months, and I was mostly excited still. And then they kind of said, "Well, no, it's not exactly what we were looking for." 
And so then I, I rewrote it again, and I started to feel less excited about it. I was still getting paid well. I was still getting free food every day because I was in a startup environment, which was nice, lots of candy and soda. But I, I, my code was harder to work with because I kept on changing it from what originally was to this new thing, and I, I still hadn't figured out exactly what they wanted. Um, yeah, and sure enough, after, I don't know what it was, eight, nine months, it still wasn't quite what they wanted. And I was, by now I'm confused. My, my, my code is hard to work with. I've been trying really hard. I'm a smart guy. Other people around me are smart. They're working on the team with me. We're all smart people. Why is it that we can't get this right? We've had, you know, nine months in a small room with uh, people that communicate well. Why are we not nailing this? And we hired on a highly paid project manager who had had project management uh, experience and training. And she showed us how to, de how to do uh, the, the two things that I'm gonna talk about today. And it completely changed my life. I, I suddenly, once I learned how to do that, I was better than most other people out there in the software world, hands down, at least in my mind. And you don't even have to be a programmer. Like you can lead programmers if you do this stuff well. So now you're probably going to be disappointed. You're like, wow, this is, you're going to do something really powerful. But um, it seems simple, but it's really, but it's, I, I think it's powerful. Okay, so I call it designing, the title I came up with today is Designing Requirements for Visual Applications. And I put a little asterisk there. Um, in all the years that I worked in software development, starting in about 98, and then I was still doing project work last, you know, probably as recently as 2013. Uh, pretty much every year I've ever worked or managed in software development, this stuff applied and, and would have made life better, would have made projects better, would have made companies more successful. And I, I was talking to Dr. Michelle Hepner about this one day while we were driving home from a conference, and she said, you know, that really wouldn't apply to what I did. What? <laughs> this is all there is. You know, this is the best. And she said, and she, and then we kind of came to understand what the, the reason was for our differences of perspective. She worked for Saber, and does anybody know what Saber is? Was? They're a. Uh, I mean, nowadays we use Orbits and website Expedia, uh, websites like that to plan our our air travel. It used to be that you would work with travel agents and strip malls and places like that, you'd go down there and you'd, you'd plan out your vacation and they'd, they'd have all access to all the flight information through a system called Sabre. So she worked for this software company that took data from airlines and then published it out to everybody in the world who uh, well, was connected to a computer terminal, which usually was associated with a, a real estate agent, or sorry, a travel agent. Um, home People working at home, the, the public, we didn't have the internet back early on. And so this was usually just for people that were travel agents. But at any rate, um, the, the stuff that she was worried about was the data flow from the airlines to the terminals. And it just wasn't, all the work she did was all about the traffic control of that data going throughout the system that would, I think was really, really complicated and problematic. There was a lot of challenges in making that happen. Um, so anyway, it didn't apply to her. But me, I worked in web development and desktop based development and it, it mattered a lot for me. That's all that mattered for me. Okay, two big sections. Students will be able, that I want you to know about, students will be able to create visual mockups of visually based software using PowerPoint and two, students will be able to write a text based requirements document. And then there's some parts of doing either one of those. Okay, so this is, this is how it works. Uh, okay, imagine that you are in, that in your imagination, you envision, you know, this is back in 98. Imagine in your imagination, oh, that doesn't sound right. I've used the imagination <laughs> twice. Uh, imagine you envisioned a need for a search engine that looked like this back in 1998. In other words, imagine that you had the idea for Google back around 98. A nice, clean interface for doing searches. Uh, you probably missed the context of this, but back, back then the, the search engines sometimes were really cluttered. Yahoo was full of categories and stuff like that. This was kind of groundbreaking, the idea that you would just have a search box and the rest of the page is pretty much blank and empty. Granted, it was the search technology itself that got them on top, but one of their features was being neat and clean. Anyway, 
So imagine you were thinking this in your head. Hey, I want to make this thing called Google. And it's going to look like this. Um, how could you communicate what's in your head to developers? So, you know, so whether it's Google or the next Uber or the next Netflix or the next Amazon, regardless of, of or the next Angry Birds, uh, regardless of what it is that's in your head, how can you uh, communicate this to software developers? Uh, and this is important because you can go out to sites like, let me just write one down, elance.com. And just hypothetically, if you had a couple screenshots put together of the next Uber or Google or Amazon that you want to create, you can go out there and find thousands and tens of thousands of people who will, who will do work for you. They'll do your graphics, they'll do your programming, um, and they will work for cheap, super cheap. If you're in a big corporation and you need something done, uh, you can farm out to somebody for maybe a couple hundred bucks, or if it's huge, maybe even a couple thousand dollars, and get amazing things done. So basically, you know, if you're or, or if you're an entrepreneur and you want to get something going, um, if you got some money, if you got if you had your mock-ups ready to go, and you got somebody to give you a little bit of money, you won some competition, business competition, whatever. Uh, got a loan from your parents, you could design anything you want visually, you can go pay some guys to build it. But the shortcoming that usually exists in business is people don't usually articulate well enough what it is that they're trying to build, what's in their head. So initially something like this is only in your, in your head as an idea and you just talk about it or you write it down but, or, or maybe you do a napkin sketch. Uh, but, but programmers need a little bit more than this to go on. Um, this could be a design that you put together, but there's something else that can go along with this, which I'll call the text requirements document. All right, now this, here's this document that I've created. So when I was first taught about this, when somebody would give me requirements for software, they would give me a set of PowerPoint slides with every single piece of text and detail on every page in the site on them, and a text document like this that explained what's in those images. So, and, and stop me at any time, ask me questions. I probably haven't said anything interesting enough yet to ask questions, but when you're ready, just shout out questions. Okay, so first page, um, if we were creating Google, we might have a first page that looks like this. First, we would have a title for our page, we would indicate which version of the requirements we're working with, when it was last updated, and who it was last updated by. So this is kind of, it's a living document. You, you write down what you think needs to happen in the software, you get more information later on perhaps, and you update it. All right, next page, table of contents. So from here, you can see that I'm going to be writing about in this document, the, an overview of what the whole application is. Uh, I'm going to have a, a section on the home page, a section on the search results page, a section on the page rank formula, a section on the privacy page, a section on the about page, etc. And let's, all right, but we're not to the, the good stuff yet. Overview. All right, this is boring. Uh, the Google search. Okay, the Google search engine is an interactive web page that allows visitors to type in a search term and get a list of websites back that match that search term. Okay, I was just putting in an example, some filler space there. Here's here's where it gets real. So, within the Google site, as indicated here in this graphic, there are this one page that you're looking at to account for. Three different links here, three different links here, another link there, so six, seven, eight including the page, and then nine if you include the search results page. So this one graphic right here implies that there are nine different pages that we're going to account for in the creation of this product. And if you don't give the details of all nine of those pages, then the software developers cannot finish completing the site. All right, so if we're just concerned with this one page right here, this is what we could say about it. Okay, we could uh, you know, give it a number, like this is requirement number one, that it's gotta have a home page. 
We'll give a little description of what this page is about. The home page is the page that will be found at google.com. It features a page image, a search text box, links to special features of search, and footer links related <coughs> to Google business. Okay, just a little overview of what's here. Now we get into the, the good stuff, our list of requirements. We go from 1.1 all the way to 1.7.4. So if we were instead talking about the, the, private, like the, the privacy page and somebody started talking to you about requirement 10.2.3, you would know, oh, we're, we're talking about something in the context of the privacy page. Uh, the first one we have here is one, so um, any subset of one is a requirement directly related to some aspect of the home page, the way that I've written it up here. Okay. So, requirements. And, and this stuff is not set in stone. It, you can adjust it to suit your needs. The, the key thing is that it's <coughs> comprehensive enough. So one, so one item, one, I, I highlighted a bunch of main sections on here. Um, the page itself, the header image, the search box, search buttons, the column navigation links, which are these things over here, and then the footer links level one and footer links level two. So I just highlighted so it's visually easier to see. All right, and then, and then I talk about each one with individual bullet points to relate to different aspects or requirements related to that thing. So for the page itself, um, I want it to be uncluttered. That was just kind of a note. But I say page will have white background. That's something that matters. Page images and text will be centered horizontal, horizontally and vertically. So even if you didn't see this image, you could read that. You would know, oh, whatever's on this page is centered in the middle of the page. Um, top to bottom, left to right. Next thing. All right, so this, this is, gets a little bit more specific. Okay, so all, I've got one, two, five different things about the header image. Header image will be 378 pixels wide and 150 pixels tall. Header image will be centered in approximately 150 pixels from the top of the page. Header text will say Google. Header letters will will be blue, red, yellow, blue, green, and red in that order with TM at the end in small text. Header font will use the Catull, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, serif based typeface. So I've described where this image is on the page, what the colors are, what font it uses. So pretty specific stuff, yeah. Uh, could you go back to the Word document real quick? Uh huh. How exactly would you know the uh, pixel mm -hmm. size if you're just, if this is just a, um, an idea of sorts? If it starts off as an idea, how would you know that something Well, specific? it probably progresses. Um, you might initially start off with your napkin sketch, sketch and stuff like that, oh. but, <laughs> but here's, here's, the, here's kind of the, the problem. Imagine that I'm a software developer and, and you're giving me, and you're talking to me about this great idea that you have. And, uh, and so you say, hey, I want an image that says Google on there, on the top of the page. And so I'm like, well, okay, well, how big is, the, you know, how big is the image? Well, I, I need to know all this stuff about it. Like, because, you know, I can make it, you know, huge, I can make it small. I don't know where to go with that. And that's part of the, so the less information I have, the more iterations we go back and forth. So you might, um, yeah, it's less, you know, we waste time when we do that. We iterate and we try, and that's how a lot of uh, a lot of work happens. Is we iterate when we're not professional or competent enough to express these things up front. Like trial and error. Yeah, usually we go. Oftentimes we go through trial and error. Yeah. So usually the graphic designer give that logo to the developer, and that person will add it to the code. Is that is that how it works, or? Is that yeah. Good? Yeah, um, you know, chances are that you'll you'll you know there'll be a job role which is graphic designer, and you will get that from you will get the uh, graphics from them. They might actually send you a bunch of different samples, but at some point you need to decide how big it is. Um, uh, yeah, the the web and even your mobile phones—they're not, you know, 
that there are types of images that you can make that so you know if you want it three pixels smaller that requires creating a whole different image and you don't want to go back and forth with your designer you know a hundred times getting that right um, I don't want you to get hung up too much about this it's not I, I actually don't care that much if the size limitations and specifics are there I just want you to know that it's something that you can specify um, and actually, the, another thing I thought of when you asked that question, I was thinking, I don't know if this is how you asked it, but like, how do you know how big it's supposed to be? Well, the reason, as a general business guy, you might not know that. You might instead say something like, <laughs> compared to a regular web page, it takes up about, you, you could do inches. You could be like, yeah, it's good. You, I mean, that makes sense. As a business guy, you wouldn't know. But you know, on my typical, on my laptop screen, I want an image that takes up about, you know, I want it to be about four inches wide and an inch and a half tall. You could, and that could work too. They could probably deal with that and work with it somehow. All right, so just saying, potentially, you could describe exactly what the image is supposed to be about, where it's supposed to be located. Okay, search box. Search box will be an HTML text box on that page, the HTML text box will be 55 characters wide. And it's like, I mean, these might sound like weird details to you, but this could be a Flash-based text box, you know, if you're using, if you're programming in Adobe Flash. There's a lot of different ways you could make a, a text box here. Um, this could be, well, you can make it a text area, which is a different type of HTML element. Um, if you're a business person, you might not, you just might not know, in which case you wouldn't specify it. So it actually helps if you have product managers slash project managers who are putting these things together with a business person who can articulate these things so that when it's given to a software developer, they know exactly what they're supposed to run with. Um, yeah, and it's not arbitrary. I mean, there's default settings for how wide a text box is, but again, that's something you can specify. You know, is, is it okay if it's only, you know, 12 <laughs> characters wide or 20 characters wide? Probably not. That'd probably be goofy on a search engine. So it is something you could think through. So, I mean, hopefully, hopefully the thing that jumps to your mind so far is, man, it's such a simple little page. Like, you can really get complicated in describing the simplest page. And I, and I did. I picked the simplest page I could think of. It gets worse, right, if you did something that's actually complicated. Search buttons. There will be two search buttons centered underneath the text box. Search buttons will utilize the Arial font. Um, first search button will say Google search. Clicking the first search button will take the user to the search results page. So you indicate in there what happens when you interact with elements of the page. And so I actually have in this document built in the idea that you would have a requirement too, which would talk about the, the search results page. Um, so you would specify in there all kinds of funny details about you know, what, what's your font size, how many different things are you expressing, is it text and a link, um, is it how many times it's been viewed. I mean, you, there's all kinds of stuff that you could put in your results pages. Um, how big this text is on the page. Okay, next link says second search button, or sorry, the next button. Sec, sec, second search buttons will say I'm feeling lucky, and I didn't decide to spell that one out. Uh, to kind of organize things a little bit. Now this stuff is just kind of trivial at this point. but So you notice that there's stuff over here on the right side. And I just happen to write out right column navigation links. There will be three links to the right of the box. But here's the important part. Navigation links will use 10 point Arial font with blue color. Like it's, it's not an accident that stuff shows up on the page looking like it is. There are lots and lots of fonts you could use. There's lots of colors. There's lots of sizes. It's underlined or it's not. Um, so if you just leave it up to, to the developer to decide, it's kind of overwhelming. Like, do you see, like, for every <laughs> single word and, or, and letter on the page, how many decisions they have to make that you're just leaving them to, you know, flounder with? And so that's part of the, you know, when I talked about how for months and months and months we're going back and forth, um, they describe to me what they want, but there's so many details that go into what you want that, anyway, it's tricky to nail down. Uh, other key parts from the rest of it, links will you, uh, so we have, okay, we got, 
footer links level one and then footer links level two. I, I noted that in the smaller one that I would use uh, like black text on the one part and then 10 point Arial font with blue color for the other link. Uh, and the privacy link will take somebody to the privacy page which corresponds to a different requirement. Okay, so that's an awful lot of stuff that you could say about just one cropped portion of one home page. Uh, if, you, if you were to think about describing everything that's on ESPN.com, <coughs> a lot of those complicated pages, it would, it could be a lot. Yes? I mean, obviously, I, I see that it's a really good description. I mean, is it because you did backward? You already see the product. Um, and and you also already know the terms and you are actually created from the, something like this from scratch. Someone who don't have any any kind of that knowledge and who has a business degree be able to, are they able to really give that much detailed information to a developer? They, like they can do something comparable to it. They might not, you know, it, it's, it's to the limitations of their abilities. They might not specify the font size. It might just, like, for, of the gra or the logo. They might not specify the logo size. They might just say, you know, cool logo goes here. <laughs> and, and on their, um, and, and in their PowerPoint mock-up, they'll have the, you'll, you'll see the approximate portions for the page, and they'll just have a, a graphic designer look at that and, you know, roll their eyes, whatever. And they'll just like, oh yeah. Well, they probably wouldn't roll their eyes. They're excited to have something to do. They're like, yes, sweet, and I'm gonna make something. And so you know they'll make three different versions of it and say, hey, this is what you want, and they'll you'll try them out there. So you don't know you don't have to know all of these things, uh, but perhaps after a couple revisions, when the graphic designer makes the first one and puts it on the page and it's like just the right size, maybe if you're updating it, maybe at that point you might say, hey, as we keep on doing new versions of this, you might put that on there. But no, you just work with the best that you have. If all you can say is um, there will be a header image centered at the top that's kind of big, see mockup for more information. That's, you know, there will be an input box. If all you know is that I'll call it an input box, if you don't know it's a text box in HTML, you don't have to know that. You just say input <coughs> box. The uh, software guys, they can figure it out. So the more you can add it and the better, but you don't have to know, you don't have to know anything. You can just be a regular business guy and you can still be a leader in the software development field, just being, having an eye to attention and uh, being able to put together mockups like this. Um, another thing that you could do is add callout boxes. Um, I, I personally find the process of writing out these documents to be tedious and cumbersome. For me, it's fun to make a, a document that you know maybe looks like this. Like this I just made in PowerPoint really quick. And I'll have you do it too. Like to me it's fun <coughs> to just make something like that really quick as a business person. I don't like uh, I don't like writing out all this information. So there actually should be a question that should come with that. What's the question? When should you do it? Uh, it depends. Um, in, Okay, so one thing, so imagine that I had actually mocked this thing up myself. I just took a screenshot here, but imagine if I put all this stuff on here using shapes within PowerPoint. Um, if I were not using that document, another alternative I could have is to insert callout boxes. So right here we have shapes, and I will select a box here, a rectangle. This is one way to handle it. I will draw this on the page. And I will standardize in my documentation on one way of doing this. I will go over to shape fill and make it yellow in this case, and yellow for its outline, or well, maybe I'll make a little slightly black outline. And I want the weight of it to be relatively light. Okay. Let's see if I start typing on here. I say. Okay, it's coming out white, so that's not going to work for me. So there's a couple of ways I can handle this. So you can just highlight a box and just start typing, and words will or letters will appear. 
Um, let's see, if I, with that highlighted, I'll try this. I'll try setting the, the text to black and see if that works for me. Yep, that works. There's, there's other ways I could do this. I can just highlight the shape, right click on it, and there should, uh, maybe it depends on the version of, that I'm using. Hmm. All right, maybe not in this version. Uh, I've got an older version of Access, or sorry, of uh, Microsoft Office upstairs, and when I right click on it, I get, I get the, uh, I, I get a full contextual menu of ways to edit the text and stuff like that. Anyway, all right. So what if I, so here I could do, for example, height three or uh, width three seventy eight uh, height. 125, and then I could need to find me another shape. All right, so I'll grab an arrow and point it to that. Once I've got my first call out box or whatever I want to call it on the page, I can I can copy and paste that box and start. Um, adding more. So if I needed to specify information about this text, I could say um, Arial font blue uh, 10 point, or yeah, 10 point sounds fine. Um, yet another one. takes user to search results page. So I think in a lot of ways, I've, I've neg by doing this, I've negated the need to have that other document that I have, because I put some of the details in there. So this is one alternative. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of the simplest way to approach something is the best. So don't go the hard way unless you have to. But oftentimes, you do have to describe stuff. So if I threw up, if, if this was the, was the first version of Uber, for example, or if this was a picture of Google Maps, the first one that's ever been created, and you just throw up a screenshot of what it's supposed to do, a lot of the functionality that's in that page, you really have to explain what it does when you click this button, when you mouse over this. when you, And so that's what that requirements document is for. So that you can uh, I talk about some aspect of the page, maybe it's the right menu bar or the top menu bar or the bottom menu bar. You talk about the components in there and what they do, and you spell it out in enough detail so that uh, somebody could actually create that for you. Okay, when you create PowerPoints that mock up a page, there are some good skills to know about. Uh, in particular, the use of the paint program, the use of borrowing images from Google, um, the use of taking screenshots and editing those screenshots and putting them into your, in your mock-up. All right, for example, I, I did this already, but ho hopefully you have the, uh, hopefully you have this slide deck up. This is an image that I pulled off of the internet, but imagine that Uber did not exist, and you're thinking of this for the first time. And by the way, uh, I was thinking of something else you said, like you, you kind of addressed, hey, I was making up my requirements document after the product existed. I, I got my mock-ups and my requirements documents in just as much detail before the product was created as the after one that I made. And that's why, why, that's why it was possible. Oh, so I'll tell you an end result of that story. So after this project slash product manager came in and, gave, and, and spent a few weeks writing, about, writing out the requirements and delivered it to us, and we, and we, and we developed based on that. Um, 
everybody was pleased. They're like, yes, this is perfect. It was perfect. The next provision that we sent out of the software and off our software went to the world. And, and my eyes were open. I was like, wow. You know, all the iterations were done in PowerPoint documents and going back and forth with people. And once that stuff got all squared away, then it got presented to us. And, and one of the things they talked about was that there was a, that it takes about at least, it takes at least five times as long to actually write, create something in software development as it does to make a mock-up of it. So you, you're, you know, so if you're going to do a bunch of revisions of something, do your revisions in a graphic, uh, not do it in software, because so, it'll save you most of the time that you would spend. Okay, so imagine, back to the task at hand, this is something I want you to try as a task. Imagine that uh, this Uber, these Uber pages had never been uh, thought over before, and you are going to create this for the very first time, or maybe you're going to make an Uber knockoff, I don't know. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make from scratch this particular um, image. So I'll just start off with this first image and show you how I would do that. Now, it was easier in my office because I had two screens on my computer. So it's gonna be a little bit harder. So I'm gonna copy this, so I, I highlight this. I'm gonna hit Control C, Control V, paste it. Cause I need something to reference a little bit here. So I'm gonna try and shrink it up quite a bit. So this is what I'm trying to create, pretending like this first image is something that exists in my mind. Now, one thing I can do when I'm mocking up pages, just for fun to make things look really cool, is I can put a picture of a phone or a tablet or web browser right on my page. Uh, and so look, I'm gonna go out to, so I'm gonna go out to the internet, and the first thing I want is I want a phone. So anyway, so I'll type in mobile phone and see what comes back up. Maybe I should have said iPhone, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I, I, I'll mouse over to images, all right. Now I've got some images to work with. So I can take any of these and, and use these as a starting place for what I'm working on. So let's, let's well, I'll just take this one. It doesn't matter which one I grab, but I'm gonna right, uh, I'm gonna click on it and then I'm gonna click view image. Okay, there it is. Now I'm ready to steal this sucker. So I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say copy image. I'm gonna go back my page, right click, and I'll paste it. Okay, so now I've got a phone to work with here. Um, okay, I want to put this interface in there. Now, again, pretend like this interface doesn't exist. I'm just creating it for the very first time to communicate with software developers. Uh, there's a few things I can do. Oftentimes, I will grab a box or one of the rectangles and I will drag that over the whole screen. Like maybe there's a whole bunch of icons and junk like that that are already there. And so let's just fill this thing with white and turn the shape outline to white also. Okay, now I've got a blank phone or a blank canvas on which I can start drawing the other stuff. First thing, and, and you guys can absolutely follow along because I'm gonna have you, or, I don't know, whatever you want to do. I'm going to give you the task to do this in a minute. All right, I, I want to add a top bar here so that I can communicate well with others. So I'm going to grab another rectangle and I'm going to create it right across there. And it's blue. And it doesn't have that nice, some of the nice features that that one does. So I'll go over to Quick Styles and let's find a black one like maybe this one. Um, that one has a little bit of a bevel on it. So when I say bevel, it means it, it looks like it's raised up and it's got some of the lighting effects. That's not exactly what's in this one, but eh, close enough. Close enough for communicating. All right, so now I'm gonna type in the word Uber. U-B-E-R, good enough. Um, now, I want a little person icon. So I'm gonna go back to Google. And I'm gonna type in person icon. And go over to images. And this one looks good to me. Ooh, actually, you know what? This one's a GIF. 
and it's a transparent GIF, and that gives me problems when I'm working with them. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to hit the button print screen on my keyboard, and it's going to capture the whole screen. Well, I'll, I'll, show, I'll, I'll show you what the problem is. If I click on this, and I say, like, you know, view image, and oh, this, copy. A, if I say copy image, and I go over here, and I try and paste it. No black problem. You know what? Actually, that, that one actually came out just fine. <laughs> uh, when I was doing it earlier today, it was pasting it in black. Um, still, it's not ideal. But you're right. It, it doesn't have the right background that I want. So, if, so one thing I can do, I'll, I'll show you a different way to do it. So yeah, so that, that method did sort of kind of work. Um, another thing I could do is I could hit print screen. So I'm going to hit print screen. I'm going to go over here and I'll type in paint. Okay. Once paint is open, you could uh, do control V to paste. Okay, now the whole page has been pasted into paint. And I've got a whole palette of images to work with. And I happen to want this one. This little uh, option right here, selection, allows me to grab a little spot on the page. We could just have to use these snipping tool. Snipping tool. There is a snipping tool, and I, I don't use that, but I'm aware that it's there. Um, okay, let's do that. But I might need something that matters in just a second. Just you wait. Just you watch. All right, so I'm going to crop it. Now, now, actually, there's a couple things I could do. Um, I could crop it, and then this is all that's left. That works. Um, another thing I can do right now, since it didn't have the right colors, I, I don't know if you can do this in the snipping tool, but I'm going to right click on it. <laughs> While it's selected, I'm going to right click on here, I'm going to select invert color. Okay, now I'm going to say control A, it highlights the whole thing, control C, go back over to my PowerPoint, control V, now I've got a little person icon for my mock up. And I'm just going to shrink that baby up. There we go. So get somewhere. Are you liking this? Yeah, you can, you can make stuff that looks almost exactly like anything. Okay, now I need a credit card icon. So I'm going to do the same process for credit card icon. I thought you need Photoshop for this. You know, I, I would have thought so too, but I was messing around a little bit today and I was like, yeah, I'm going to show them how to do this. All right, so. Uh, if I click on this one right here, I get this. Um, eh, this one actually worked. Okay, oh. <laughs> I, this one's transparent, and that gives me some issues. If you find a better way to do that, it's fine. This is just what I came up with real quick before coming down here. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing again. I want this one right here, and I want to invert its colors. So I'm gonna do Alt Print Screen. Or, sorry. Uh, by the way, usually print print screen will get the whole screen. If uh, if you want just the application that's on top, you can shrink up your page a little bit. And uh, if I go Alt Print Screen, it just gets this part of the page rather than the whole page. So Alt Print Screen, go back over to here, uh, Control V, pasted that in there. Here's the thing that I want. I grab it. I'm going to crop it, I'm going to right click, invert the color, I'm going to say control A, control C, so control A is select all, control C is copy, um, go back over here, control V, there's that little credit card, I suppose I could have chosen a different color scheme there, but anyway, I didn't notice what I was working with before, but either one. So we, we knew or I knew the original one would work. When you're making that size smaller, do you, do you press control to make it? No, no, no. you just you just okay. You just drag and okay, like that. big and small. Yeah, so actually I think probably the original image would have been the right a better color perhaps. But then you get the background, white background. Yeah. And I could deal with that, but I'm kinda lazy. <laughs> um, yeah, with Photoshop you can fill stuff in a lot better. Uh, this is just kind of a Oops. This is just kind of a lazy way to do things. Anyway. All right. 
I, I probably can figure out what, oh, oh, actually, you know what I can do? Uh, I could highlight it and then click. What have I done? Unselect. Un I'll try to do it again. This is this is sort of time wasting uh, when you but it's hard to resist once you start messing with graphics and stuff um, it's it's a little bit addicting uh, so maybe that's why graphic designers like to do this stuff it's fun so if I, if I highlighted something and I hit delete it's going to make it black here because I have my background color set as black um, oops yeah. all right. Sorry, this 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 part I'm just wasting time uh, trying to mess with paint. All right, I'll just leave it like it was. But I could easily, I could very easily get something that would match that one, um, just by searching the images and inverting something and putting it on the page. I, I need the other stuff on there though. All right, so I need another. Oh, okay. Once I've made them, all right. Right now, I take back what I was about to say. All right. Um, on the bottom of the page, I need another black box. So this time, I'm just going to make it flat black. <coughs> uh, and I need, it looks like I need two things on there. I need a green button. So I'll grab another shape, grab that, pull it across. I'll type on there, set, pick up, location. And then I will go to my handy quick drawing styles and turn that into green. So it's looking pretty, you know, close enough. Uh, you can move things a little around a little bit when it's highlighted with the arrows. <laughs> this thing needs to be a little smaller though. So that, that you know, it, sometimes it can take a while to, to pick at things. I'm going to highlight this text and make it a little bit smaller. That way I can keep on shrinking my button. But it looks like I want it wide, but I just don't want it super tall because I need room for the other thing. Uh, if you hold down control and hit the arrow, then, it, then things move over like just in little teeny tiny increments. All right, so we got that there. Now we need this next thing where it says 800 Market Street. So I'm gonna grab another one. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll grab another black box. I'll put a box there. All right. Can you just do a text box? Yeah, yeah. I I could. Um, but I did want the uh, some of the styles here. Mm, I wish I could see a little better. If you put it on the oh, if you put it in the correct portion of the page, you can uh, I can see it applied better. So I'm gonna just move this over to the left for a minute. I what's the group? Highlight it, right click group. There we go. I highlight it all, move it over. So now okay, now I'm gonna highlight. The reason I did that is because I want to go over to here for the quick drawing styles and I want to see what it looks like while I'm testing out the different ones. Um, yeah. If I had something that stood out a little more, this would be meaningful. Otherwise, yeah, a text box would have been just fine. All right. Anyway, I picked one that didn't really do anything for me. Oh, now I'm in trouble. It's just Actually, maybe, you know what, maybe I'll just leave it here. I'll leave this on the left side of the page. Rather than, okay. Other stuff I want. Okay, I want a little pin, and I want this little location thing on there. So, same ideas as before. I'm gonna go to Google, and I'm gonna type in location pin. Go to images. Pick out uh, whatever pin I like the most, and I think, you know, I think this one looks pretty good right there. I'll take that one. So I'll just go, I'll, I'm going to do the same process I did before. 
I'll just go print screen, go over here, paste it, find the pin that I want. Now I'm going to be lazy on this one, but I'm just going to highlight it and then I'm going to say control C without cropping anything. Go back to my page, control V, there it is. And I'm going to just locate that right there where I want it. Uh, then there's that other icon thing. Uh, what do we call that? Location? What do we call that symbol? Pin? No, uh, like location icon. Let's What's it look like? It's like a cross location, location pin? Location yeah, pin. that. Location target. Location pin. Oops. Oops. Location pin. Oh. Location tar oh yeah, more like a target. Oh, there it was. Mm -hmm. You saw it somewhere? Uh, go down. Yeah, right there. Yeah. All right, now that one's gray, <coughs> which isn't ideal, but we'll just take it anyway. So we'll print screen, grab, come over here, and where is it? Uh, sometimes when you paste things, paint is kind of a rudimentary toy, so it's easy to mess <laughs> things up in it. So sometimes you might have to do it over again if you're not using a more complicated tool. Anyway, I'll just highlight that, copy it, come back over to here, paste. And and I could have actually, if I were smart, I, I would have inverted the color and then it would look it would look great. But you get the idea. Um, now I need a map. So how about we, oh, actually there's another thing on here. Uh, maybe I'll do that last. All right, for ne next I think I want to do the map. Sound good? So we're thinking, as we put together our business model, we're thinking, hey, let's use Google Maps of some sort. And actually, I'll steal someone else's Google Maps. I could take a screenshot and do it that way. Maybe that would be fun. Um, another way to do it is I'll just take a picture of, or I'll just grab this image of Melbourne Australia, and I'll just say copy image. Uh, there's a couple different ways I could handle it at this point. One thing I can do is I can just copy it onto this page, and then there's an option to format the picture, which will include cropping it and stuff like that. But uh, just know that you could do it in there. But I think just for my purposes, I'll just do it over here in paint, because that'll be easier for me. So I'm just going to grab a slice of the page that looks about like what I'm thinking of. Copy, paste, I'll just take it over here, resize it. Now if I were explaining it, it would probably go a lot faster. Um, okay, now I need some cars, right? So let's go out and grab some car icons. Car icon. So go to images. Uh, I like this one right here. So I'll go uh, print screen over there. Paste. Grab the car that I want. Copy it. Paste it. Now I'll shrink it up a whole bunch. And then I'll just, while it's highlighted, I'll say control C, control V, and you know, so I'll, I pasted a bunch of them on the screen that I can, so I can now place them as I would like. Uh, okay, and then we're, lastly, we're missing this little thing that says the closest driver is approximately one minute away. So let's go grab another shape and we'll get a, a black box. We'll make it relatively small and put it right there at the bottom. And let's see. First I'm going to type on it and say the closest 
driver is approximate. Now it's it's a uh, the text is too big. Approximately one min away. All right. Now let's see if I click smaller text up here. Since I'm not highlighting the text, it didn't. It, it's not going to shrink it. So I got I have to highlight the whole box. Once I have the whole box highlighted, then then it'll take care of that for me as I increase and decrease the font. Okay, I want the background of this to be gray. So let's go format shape. Right click on it, format shape. And we will make its color to be gray, like a nice dark gray. And let's make it even darker. And then over here where it says transparency, we slide that, it becomes transparent. So you can make it all the way see through or just partially see through. All right, with that, I've concluded my torture of you. <laughs> but you can see that like, you could communicate with a programmer about this now, or a business person. You can say, this is, yeah, this is the app that we're thinking about. These are the features that it should have. This is what we're thinking about doing. And this is what you would do for a single page of either a multi-page phone application, iPad application, uh, web application. You can, you can do this exact same approach. And, and lay out exactly what it is that you want to make. Isn't that spiffy? Uh, okay. Next. I'd like you to try two things. Um, one thing I would like you to do is uh, take my document that's like this and redo it so that it describes so it describes this first page here. So again, imagine that you're thinking about having this program for the first time. <coughs> write out a requirements document that specifies everything that's here and has different sections and then writes about the details of those. So take a stab at that. And Eh, it's a little early for, well, it's about time for a break. So if you want to take a break in the middle of doing that, uh, go ahead. But try and, try and uh, take this template and make a requirements document out of the first image. Ooh.